Good morning and welcome to this week's pet pairing. I've already done my eyeshadow primer and my brows and now I'm going to continue with the rest of my routine. As usual, grabbing first my Glow Lust by Auric. Uh, today's video we're going to be featuring the Bridgerton 2 palette again because apparently I cannot put this palette down and I did a pairing yesterday that I really really enjoyed. We're not going to do the same pairing today because I've had the pairing that we're going to do today in my head since Sunday and I've been holding off especially for you guys so that we can do it together but I have to share with you the pairing that I did yesterday because it was like the embodiment, the epitome of the essence of um, Mariam. It was matchy matchy taken to a whole new level. Let me uh, put somewhere on the screen the picture of the look and then look at my nails. I just felt like doing something like very pastel on my nails and I've been really obsessed with Daring Dandy from the Bridgerton 2 palette, that gorgeous mint shade. So I feel like subconsciously I am now choosing for a lot of things that are mint green just because I'm obsessed with that eyeshadow and I want to like find ways to incorporate it into my daily life as much as possible. I am now going to take my little depotted Clarins um, cons instant concealer. I've been really good and I have still resisted the urge to buy the blush palette from the Bridgerton collection because I desire it very deeply at this point. Every single review I have seen of it has just been glowing review of the actual uh, formula. And I don't know if I will have the patience to see whether um, Dame Mother will release this formula in a different packaging format. I might not be able to hold off. I will, however, hold off until a sale because right now, if I would get it right now, I would get it full price. And as it is, I'm so mad about the packaging that if I buy it full price, I will literally hate myself. <laughs> so I will not stoop that low. <laughs> not even for you, Dame Mother, Pat McGrath. I'm hoping that a ton of you who were still waiting for your orders to be shipped have in the meantime either received your orders or you have actually uh, received a shipping notification and at least the products are on the way. I'm giving a little shake to my foundation, by the way, I'm going to take my Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude, which a while back was uh, down to here and I think I'm going to put it out for the day to see how far down it is now. but. My estimation would be somewhere down to here because I've been using this foundation a lot lately. I think ironically I might finish this foundation before the uh, Estee Lauder Double Wear Light which I got from Alice to finish <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I think she underestimated how much product was left in there. It will be very ironic if this one finishes first though because the bottle of this foundation was pretty much full in the beginning of this year, end of last year or something, when I started using it a bit more often in my routine because I wanted to finish it now that I have found a worthy dupe of it. In today's video I will give you a little bit... Um, why can I not talk? You know, sometimes I edit my videos and then I hear myself saying the weirdest shit. Like in the video where I talked about um, learning a lot of languages, at one point I said that um, something in the lines of because I was studying Dutch in the Netherlands, I had the privilege of being immersed into the culture. And I was like, immersed? What? I obviously meant immersed and I know the word, but sometimes this weird stuff happens that when I am doing my makeup especially and when I'm talking at the same time, I will say a word that I don't mean at all and then I will listen to myself and I'll be like, are you having a stroke? What is going on? It is so weird. Anyway, today I'm going to set my face with the Hourglass uh, Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Dim Light. I've been testing the um, powder from Charlotte Tilbury with varying success, varying degrees of success and enjoyment to it. So I'm still not sure about this powder and I still don't know that it's a powder that I will even keep in my collection. I don't mind the finish of the powder from Char Charlotte Tilbury upon application because it really like nicely blurs my pores and everything. However, sometimes throughout the day it just really dries out uh, my under eye area. But yesterday, for example, it looked really nice. I had like this really nice healthy glow to my face towards the end of the working day. So it wasn't looking too bad. It only started looking pretty bad at the like the 13, 14 hour mark. But like after 13 hours of wearing your foundation, obviously 
it's not going to look great. For today's chat in this video, I can give you a bit of an update on how Mona and Lisa have settled in now that it has been pretty much half a year or almost half a year since they uh, moved into our house. And I think they have settled pretty much into their rightful position as queens of the house who dictate the rules around this household. To warm up my complexion a little bit, I'm going to take my beloved uh, bronzer from MAC in the shade Delphic. This is one of their studio sculpt bronzing powders. This specific shade comes back in limited edition collections every now and then. So the two ladies, um, they have settled, I think, pretty well. I think they are very comfortable with us now. I would say that they are probably going to open up just a tiny bit more, but not much more than they have already because I can see from their demeanor from, and from the way they interact with us that they trust us and they're, they're very comfortable with us. And I just wanted to share how they've been doing and a few funny little anecdotes. You already know about the two traumatic experiences that we have had with uh, Mona aka Houdini who managed to disappear twice on us for almost uh, 24 hours. But luckily she's been like chill since then. She's been kind to my nerves. So for blush today I'm going to be busting out my Electric Bloom from Pat McGrath Labs because the sun is starting to come out, it is starting to actually like feel like warm, the air outside is starting to feel warmer, it's not that like crispy, very like frosty air on a spring morning. Yesterday evening when I was coming back from work it actually felt nice and warm. So I think it's time to bust out uh, Electric Bloom because I really love this blush and how it livens up my complexion. So they've started to go out so we have our kitty door we live in a house in a relatively peaceful neighborhood and obviously the ladies are allowed to go out because i know that cats really thrive when they can go out it just feels natural to them to be able to go out to their business in nature you know chase mice chasing mice is a prime activity Mona and Lisa have taken up to, let me tell you. It's also very interesting, I noticed that in the beginning when they couldn't go out of the house yet, they would spend a large portion of the night chasing each other and playing together and, you know, being just very, like, naughty little kitties with each other. But since we started letting them out, I don't really see them interact as much anymore. They will occasionally, like, butt heads and like give each other a little lick or I will see them like do a little bit of playtime but it's not nearly as intense as it was in the beginning so I feel like being able to go out has really uh, changed also their interaction a little bit. It has really been an indication that when you keep cats inside they need to get that energy out somehow and when you have two they will play a lot with each other but when you start letting them out they will basically go on their like separate adventures and waste the energy that way and then sleep again throughout the day and then repeat and they will not have that same interaction it was very interesting actually and now that i've known them a little bit longer i know i also noticed like quite a bit of differences in their personality uh, let me grab a highlighter i'm going to take my beautiful divine rose highlighter gorgeous highlighter i really love the formula on this one so something that they share they're both cuddle butts they both love to uh, come for pets, they're very very sweet, they're not really lap cats though, it's like they will come and settle in my feet or next to me in the evening but they won't really come and like sleep on my lap. Sometimes Lisa will do that but Mona not so much. Um, I was only successful to l have Mona on my lap once when I she was like sleeping next to me and like I kind of like rolled her over onto my lap and she kind of stretched out and stayed there for a while and I have Instagram evidence for that. I will try to post a photo of that somewhere where you can see the grin on my face because I was that happy. And they will definitely come and like rub themselves against you. And um, Mona specifically has that extremely, extremely sweet and very unique feature. She has many, many unique features. Mona is really one of a kind. But when Mona is in a good mood, I don't know how to explain it and I don't have a video of that, but she will like come and she will like either like uh, graze a wall or your legs and then one of her back paws will just like shoot backwards. Like she will just be like, whoop, like this. It's so cute. And another really like funny thing about her, she, when she sleeps on the cat tower, um, I will show you a photo of that. I have a photo of that. I have never seen a cat do that. She won't have her tail like curled up around her body. She will like kind of like let it hang and like remain like this hanging for a while it's very it's very cute to watch she has such unique features mona is very unique 
I spritz my sponge with a little bit of Fix Plus, by the way, just to melt all the powder powders with each other. So both of them are cuddle butts and both of them suffer permanent famine. I don't know how it's possible. They eat on the regular. We give them uh, food like in small portions quite often throughout the day. They get cat milk, they get wet food, they get dry food. They basically, you know, have, have it all. And yet every time you make a beeline for the kitchen, they are running one time my husband said they got so excited that both of them like kind of like bumped into the wall out of excitement hashtag sad okay let me interrupt a little bit the mona and lisa stories to tell you uh, what we're going to do for a look today so as you have seen from the photo today we're com having a little bit of like an unusual combination uh, mostly unusual because the la vie and rose palette is not one that i have featured a lot on my channel and also not one that I use very often. I will pull it out every now and then and I enjoy it, but it's not one that I use very often. Anyway, before we get into the La Vie and Rose palette though, I will just bust out the um, Bridgerton palette and I will take a little fluffy brush and go into this shade here, the peachy pink that um, baked matte gelée formula. I really, really enjoy it. And I have really been enjoying the tone of this eyeshadow because it leans much more coral and peach than it really does pink. And I think it's going to fit today's look beautifully. So Lisa. Lisa is somewhat smaller in size than her sister and she is really sweet. She's like a little cuddle butt. She's very friendly. She's very open with humans to the point where she will go and snuggle up to sleep together with Nicola, which is very, very strange for a cat. So she's very friendly and very open to um, all humans of all ages, apparently. And she's also the Vicious Huntress. That's the nickname I have given her. Because that little kitten, when it comes to catching mice, oh boy, let me tell you, I think she's going to single-handedly uh, eradicate the mouse population by the end of this summer. She's extremely good apparently in catching them. She brings them home and by now I think she knows that we don't really appreciate her presence because um, when we shoo her away she goes out back out pretty quickly but in the beginning she just brought the mice in the house and then she would sit underneath the couch and growl if you tried to like shoo her away and it was very funny because She's very tiny and her growl is too cute. Like you cannot take her seriously when she when she growls. It's like and then I was like, listen, Elizabeth, I really want to take you seriously, but I cannot. Please take your mouse business elsewhere. By now she kind of knows that we don't really like her mice gifts and she quickly brings them back out where she plays with them for a disturbingly long amount of time, okay? On Saturday, during the day, she brought one, then I shoot her away, and then I swear she was busy with that mouse probably for at least another hour. It was really sad to watch, and sometimes I don't know what's better, whether I should just take the mouse away from her and, like, release it back into the nature, or whether she has already done so much damage that the poor mouse will die anyway, and it's better if she just, like, if I let her finish the job. And then here you have a funny story about Mona. Mona, on the other hand, the unique sweet creature that she is, she has that like little like clumsiness to her. Like her sister is very like gracious. She's a little tiger. Mona is sweet and she has that like very perky way of walking and um, her demeanor can be just such an incredible joy to watch but she's, she can be very clumsy. So Mona doesn't, re I don't think she knows how to catch mice. I think the only way she catches mice is one of two ways. Uh, number one, she basically plays with whatever prey her sister has already gotten. Like the other evening, uh, she came with, with a mouse and then I shoot her away and then I went to see what was going on outside and Mona was having the best time ever. She was like flinging it around and like, pawing it around, but the mouse was like super fucking dead. So I think she just found a mouse outside that her sister had already taken care of. And then she brought it home. Uh, let me do a little interruption to tell you what we're going to do next. Next I'm going to grab the La Vie and Rose palette and a little um, like packing brush like this. And I'm going to go into this shade, like the very in your face purple and I'm going to fluff that into my outer corners 
but I'm going to start applying that quite gently because it's a very pigmented shade and I just want to take my time to build it up. So the second manner in which Mona can catch a mouse is the following situation. One evening Hubs and I are already in bed and we're, you know, kind of like dozing off and then at one point I hear this like clanking sound and then it continues and then it's it's almost like something heavy with a metal on it is hitting the floor. Sorry, I'm just demonstrating for you now, not that you can see. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then Hubs goes down and he's like, oh, I think Mona has a mouse. And I was like, okay, but like, what's that awful sound? And then at one point Mona came and like hid here underneath our bed and without seeing her, I was like, does she have the mouse attached to the trap? And Hubs was like, that is exactly what's going on. So that is the second way Mona can catch mice, if they're already in the trap. It's not one time that it happened, it has happened several times since then. I don't know which poor neighbor keeps losing their traps, uh, but um, they, they can be pretty sure that Mona took care of it. And recently the two ladies took their hunting skills to a whole new level, because on Saturday morning I found uh, two-thirds of a dead pigeon in my backyard with a severed wing and it was disgusting and then I went on to like clean underneath our garden bench more extensively and I found four dead mice in various stages of decomposition. Luckily it's still the winter months so decomposition basically means that they like shrivel and dry out but the summer months are coming and I am seriously concerned because my friends the maggots are coming back and I do not want to have infestations of maggots in my backyard thanks to you know corpses of dead mice not to mention that I'm absolutely horrified what's going to happen when we go on holiday for two weeks in the summer um, am I going to find like a pile of corpses in my backyard I'm genuinely worried I'm going to just use a tiny bit of my finger here to just shove it here in my lashes in my um, Lash line. Okay, for this next step I'm going to take a little bit of glitter glue and I'm just going to take the NYX one. You can use your Intensifies by Pat McGrath if you have that. And something that I'm definitely not used to with both of these ladies is being on the watch all the time for what kind of food I leave outside because they are going to come and they're going to lick it. The other day I was making myself a sandwich for work with like a little bit of turkey and cheese and then I literally turned around for a second and out of thin air Lisa had manifested on the kitchen counter and she was like having the best time ever with my sandwich. Um, and I can tell you I spent probably about 50% of my morning and 50% of my evening when I'm cooking dinner scooping cats off kitchen counters. Like I scoop one and I put her down and then the other one comes and then they kind of like do this or then they're, they're both there. It's a mess. It's madness. Now I'm going to go into uh, what's probably my favorite shade in this eyeshadow palette, which is the shade Pale Fire. Um, I also have this shade as a single from the Idols. The single eyeshadow actually has quite a bit of a dent in it because I use this eyeshadow a lot, especially in like the spring and summer months. So I'm putting this eyeshadow down as a little bit of a base for the topper that we're going to lay in a little bit over top of this. I think it's going to be the absolute perfect base for that sparkly like peachy rose copper shade from the Bridgerton 2 palette. Like I, I wish this shade had a bit of a stronger like copper peach base tone to it like a bit warmer and a bit more orange in a way. Not orange but like peach I don't know how to explain it uh, and I think this eyeshadow is just going to be the perfect base for that. I am actually going to uh, apply this by spritzing my brush because I just think it's going to look so much more exciting if I spritz my brush because I want to see what happens if I apply it that way. I think it's going to look absolutely spectacular. But here we go and I really hope... Oh yes, oh that is so pretty! You can probably also just apply it with your fingers but I wanted to see how this is going to look applied wet over top of Pale Fire. In my inner corners I'm going to grab the um, metallic champagne shade from the Bridgerton 2 palette. And I'm also going to take whatever is left on my brush and run it here underneath my brow for some extra sheen and light. 
and I'm just going to bring it down a bit by smooshing it like this with my finger. On my lower lash line I'm going to apply a tiny bit of intensifies just so the eyeshadow can stick to something, stick better to my lower lashes throughout the course of the day. And then I'm going to keep it quite simple, just go back into the Lovie and Rose palette and then run uh, this shade again all over my lower lash line. I'm also going to run one of my uh, Kiko eyeshadow sticks. This one is just a pretty purple shade. I really hope that this look is translating on camera at least a little bit as it is in real life because in real life it just looks really really pretty with the purple and the sparkles from the peachy pink. I really hope you can see at least like 30% of that look. I went with the uh, peachy vibes also for my lipstick and I have the shade Beautiful Stranger from Pat McGrath and on top of that I have the tiniest bit of her Lost Gloss in the shade Gold Allure. I initially thought I'm going to do Elson 5 and just have a red lipstick because when I wear this top, like my Snow White top, I usually go for a, a red lipstick because Snow White, hello. But today I really felt like it would be an overkill to have the purple peach and then the red lipstick, uh, especially in combination with my mint green nails. So I thought I would like chill and just do a peachy pink lip and I'm actually quite happy with the result. I think this looks very pretty. Uh, let me know what you thought about this look. Thank you so much for uh, tagging along for this little chat. I hope that you enjoyed my little ramblings about the two ladies and yeah as soon as they do something fun that's worth sharing I will definitely uh, let you know but uh, as it is for now I think you know everyone is just happy to be together. They have discovered their inner feline. Um, I couldn't be happier for them, but I'm not so happy for myself because I do not like cleaning mouse corpses. Anyway, that turned really morbid. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!